Now, on behalf of the EFDD, Mr. Farage. Well, Mr. Yonke, you're here with your commission presenting your new work plan, but I can see that you've been busy with the PR consultants. Uh, you've been busy spending a pretty penny or two. Uh, you've been trying to rebrand uh, the European Commission, and you've come up with a slogan, a new start for Europe. I mean, you couldn't invent it, could you? We do it every five years. Uh, we should get our money back. I even noticed on the Berlimont building last week a great big banner with your face on it and the rest of the Commission team, a new start for Europe under Team Juncker. Well, I don't know about new. Uh, this Commission has got five former Prime Ministers in it. It's got four former Prime Ministers in it. It's got 19 former Government Ministers in it. It's got seven former Commissioners in it. I don't know about some bright new fresh start for Europe. It looks a bit more like the knacker's yard for failed domestic politicians. And at the top of it, as President, we've got you. Now, please don't think that anybody here think that I'm questioning Mr. Juncker's competence. I am not. You are certainly competent. You're a good operator. And there are 240 multinationals who all manage to avoid hundreds of millions of euros of corporation tax by paying 1 to 2 percent tax in Luxembourg during your term there as Prime Minister, who would testify who would testify that you're certainly a, a more competent operator uh, than the man that went before you. But please, don't give us new. You know, you were Prime Minister of Luxembourg for 19 years. You headed up the Eurogroup. New you are not. You and this Commission, frankly, are as stale and musty as a corked bottle of wine. Um, we're being encouraged by your sidekick, Mr Timmermans, who, by the way, today talked about the circular economy. Sir, I haven't got a clue what you're talking about, but it sounds absolutely lovely. Um, and you told us today that you're going to adopt a minimalist approach to legislation. Again, rather like Mr Juncker, you're rather brighter and cleverer and sharper than those that have gone before you. We're not going to get from you any more proposed bans on olive oil being poured into dishes that we dip our bread in in restaurants. And I suspect uh, that under you, you will not be updating the curvature of cucumber regulations that came in a few years ago. But minimalism is one thing. Uh, but what it fails to address is the fact that the very last time we attempted uh, to address within the European Union how big the body of law that had already been imposed upon our businesses was, that was in 2005, and it was 170,000 pages of active legislation. It's probably now a quarter of a million, or perhaps even more than that. And I would suggest, Mr Timmermans, that what we don't need is minimalism. If Europe is to become competitive and to trade globally and competitively, what it needs is the axe. You've actually got to start getting rid of excessive regulation, particularly upon the small and medium-sized enterprises, who in any free market economy could not be expected to maintain the same standards for everybody and everything as the giant multinationals. But there are two areas where minimalism won't work. One is in negotiating with the United Kingdom about immigration. Mr Juncker, you've made it clear it is non-negotiable. The free movement of peoples is non-negotiable. The British want wholesale change. And secondly, there is Greece's membership of the euro when it's clear for all to see she and everybody else will be better off without them. And I suggest whatever your work programme is, actually the next five years will be dominated by Greece and the euro and Britain's membership of the European Union and you will spend most of your time, I suspect, dealing with those issues. Herr Abgeordneter, es gibt eine Frage der Frau. Vom Kollegen Bresso, there is a question. Vom Kollegen Bresso, Herr Bresso. Grazie, Presidente. Volevo chiedere all'onorevole Fall. Yes, thank you very much. He uh, also, what was forgotten was to mention the various different norms, if you like to call it that, in Luxembourg. And. <coughs> Also, I'm very glad that uh, those little English flags are no longer on your desks there, because this is a European Parliament of a united Europe. 
Uh, well, I'm not really sure what the question was, but it's awfully good if you would give me more speaking time. Thank you. Um, <laughs> as far as... Um, as far as Luxembourg norms are concerned, look, I, I made it clear. I'm not especially critical of Mr. Juncker. I actually think tax competition and different countries doing things their own way in a diverse Europe is a good and healthy thing. And by the way, a correction if I may, you're quite right. My flag isn't on my desk, but it's never hitherto been an English flag. It's been the Union Jack, which is the British flag. Thank you. Ich glaube, der Flaggenwacht ist dem belgischen Streik zum Opfer gefallen. Yes. Yes, I think the flags are also a victim of the Belgian strike, that they come in and out according to whether there's a strike or not in Belgium. Ah, sind Sie der Flaggenwacht?